Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today I'm gonna to show you how I do a ribeye for a steak cook-off. Now you might have seen these SCA events popping up all over the place. They started a few years ago and I fell in love with them. They're fun because they're one day events and all you need is a grill, a pop-up tent, a cooler full of cold beer, and you can go have a great time cooking an awesome steak. Now, the way these things work, you show up usually on a Saturday morning, they have a cook's meeting, that's where you select your two steaks and everybody gets a fair share at getting two great looking ribeyes. Then you have a couple hours to season them, marinate them, whatever you want to do to them. And then a turn-in window, usually it's 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30, something like that. And that's the time you put your steak in. There's no garnish, you're just turning in meat. It's getting blind judged. They have the results usually about an hour or so after turn-ins, and then you go home. And all that's in one day. That's really what I love about them. They're quick, and they're fun, and who doesn't love cooking a good steak? So today I'm gonna to show you how I cook a ribeye for one of these steak cook-offs. It's real easy, and if you got a grill, you can follow along with me. Let's get to cooking. So when you go to pick out your ribeyes for one of these steak cook-offs, they lay out all the steaks on a couple tables, and everybody draws a number and lines up, and you get to go through and pick them out one at a time. Now I want to show you what I'm looking for. You can see I've got a couple ribeyes here on my cutting board, and what I want to see on the laid on the table is a good spinalis, or this muscle that wraps around the front of the ribeye, the cap. That's where um, I want the judges to eat from, and it has a lot of great flavor. It's really tender meat, has a lot of marbling in it. And I don't care if it has a little fat in it, that's okay, but ribeyes are supposed to have some fat. There's a ton of flavor in them. Now usually they trim them an inch and a quarter or 16 to 18 ounces, that's the ideal steak. And we're supposed to cook these steaks to a medium doneness. That means it still has a warm pink center all the way through. We'll get more into what it's supposed to look like later, but I wanna show you how I trim them. I've already got my steaks selected. When I get them back to my cook site, what I want to do is if it has a tail on it or any of this excess fat, I want to trim that off. I'm just shaping the steaks up. So I use a sharp knife and I just round it out. I want to keep the integrity of the steak. I don't want to take too much of it off, but if there's anything hanging like this side right here, I'll go ahead and clean that up too. I don't want it to give the judge any off appearance because we're judged on how these steaks look as well as how they taste and the doneness of them. Now you can see on this steak, it has a little bit of extra skin on the outside. And usually I'll go in and I'll just take the edge of my knife and carefully remove that fat too. I don't want to judge getting a bite of fat on there. This exposes that spinalis a little more and I didn't take off too much of it. I still want a good part of meat there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to round out this tail of this ribeye. And you can also save this fat. It's great for seasoning your grill. Once you get it fired up, you can throw it on there and get your grates good and seasoned up with some beef fat. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm carefully going down, taking off a little bit of that silver skin, that excess fat there on the side, just shaping it up, cleaning that steak up. So now we have the ribeyes trimmed, it's time to get our seasons on them. And I know there's a million recipes for cooking steaks. Everybody's got their own favorite way, but I'm gonna show you how I do it for a contest. And I start with a good dose of salt, pepper, and garlic, use my AP seasoning. We're putting a good layer on both sides. And I like this salt and pepper and garlic to sit for at least 30 minutes before I do anything else to these steaks. Just drop them in a pan, put them in the ice chest, and let them stay good and cool. Let that salt, let that garlic, that pepper work on this meat. Let those flavors get down in it. And while these ribeyes are resting, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my grill and show you what we're gonna cook them on today. Now in an SCA event, you can cook on any fire or heat source you want. I bring one of these classic PK grills to me to every cook off. And these things are steak cooking machines. They're easy to operate and they're easy to transport. I just start a whole chimney full of charcoal, a couple wax starter cubes, let those coals get good and hot and then spread them out in the bottom of this PK. I add about another half chimney of unlit on top and that lets those temperatures climb upwards of 500 degrees. I'm gonna put a couple chunks of cherry wood right in there on the hot coals and get the grate back in place. And I'll also have a set of grill grates on top. These things are a must when you're cooking SCA events. It puts those beautiful grill marks on it that you wanna see and it helps those appearance scores. And hey, leave those vents wide open on the PK. We want all the air to flow through our grill. So whatever grill you're cooking on, you wanna get those temps up over 500 and let some air in so it can breathe. 
Okay, our steaks have set for about 30 minutes, and you can see that AP really, really starts to change them. Makes them a little bit darker in color. It's pulled out some moisture of them. That seasoning's working its way down in the meat. This is the time where I'm gonna get the rest of my seasoning on these steaks. So I'm just starting with a little bit of my steak rub. And this rub has a little bit more texture to it. Gives it a great flavor. It kind of makes a little bit of a crust. And you never see that texture once it's cooked, but it makes a great flavor on these steaks. And I'm not going real heavy. You just want to coat on both sides. And the last seasoning that I put on them is a little bit of spicy barbecue rub. This is my hot rub. And we're not rubbing it like we would a slab of ribs or a pork butt. Just putting a little color on the outside it gives it a great flavor, but it also, you can see, it gives that steak kind of a reddish tone, and I really like that appearance. All right, so our PK is getting good and hot, and I'm just going to check the surface tip on it. I want to see it over 500 degrees and check that out. I don't know if you can read that. We're about 520 right there, getting a few different readings, but I know we're over 500 degrees if I can hold it still. That means these coals are good and hot. Those grill grates are ready to sear these steaks. Hey, we're ready to cook these ribeyes. So now our first steak's going on the grill. I've just got a good clean grill grate, got a little bit of light oil on it. I put the steak on at an angle, mash it down so we can get a little, some really good marks on it. I'm gonna follow the same thing with this other steak. Ribeyes down, give it a little mash. We're gonna get our timer set, and then we're gonna close the lid. All right, we've had our first two minutes. Now it's time to give these steaks a twist, and that's really gonna give them that great grill mark. Do the same thing, just rotate to the other side of the grill. Give them a little mash, get it closed. So to base these steaks, once we flip them over, I used to use salted butter. I've got one stick in here that I melt in this little cast iron pot, and I seasoned it with about a teaspoon of AP, just kind of eyeball it. It's gonna give that butter a little flavor, but it's gonna be a really great addition to the top of our ribeye. It's been a total of four minutes, and we should have our grill marks right now for these steaks. This is a fast cook. We're gonna get them flipped over, see what we did. Oh yeah, perfect grill marks. There we go, two perfect grill marks. This is where I wanna baste them with a little bit of butter. We're setting our timer for about a minute and a half on this go around. Get the lid closed. So after about a minute and a half, I wanna start watching these internal temperatures. You can see I've got my thermopin here. We're sitting at about 116 on this steak, 110 on this one. We still got a little ways to go. But I'm going to go ahead and give them a twist after a minute and a half. This will be the perfect time to get one last baste in. And we're not worried about time on this last turn. This is where we're going to internal temperature. I'm looking at 128, 130 degrees. That's it. I'm going to take them off and rest them. So I'm going to watch these real close with my thermo pin. It's the only way we can get them just right. All right, we hit temp on this first steak. It's running about 128, and that's where I want to get it off the grill. It's going to carry over another five degrees, but we want it to just sit and rest for about 10 minutes. I'm going to baste it with just another little bit of butter. So our last steak's right there at 129. That's right where I want to get it off. Perfect, right before it gets to 130. What I like to do is one last little baste of butter when they come off. Short rest. These steaks will be ready to turn in. So once these steaks have rested for about seven minutes, we gotta make the decision on which one we're turning in. I usually just go for the one that I think that looks best. These both hit perfect temperature, so either one of them should be right there on doneness. So everybody gets one of these to-go boxes to turn their steak in. It'll have a little full disc in the bottom of it so you can put a hot steak in there and not worry about uh, melting the box. No garnish, no anything in the box, just a steak. So I'm gonna pick one of these right here. This is gonna be my go-to ribeye. I'm gonna lay it right in the box, and I like to do it kind of at an angle where the judges can see it. It's presented real nice. You can see the grill marks. We'd close the lid. Off it would go to the turn in. Now the steak that's left over, that's the one everybody likes because that's the one we all get to try. And at these contests, man, you've got people cutting up their steaks, bringing you bites, you're running them bites. That's what's great about it. It's a lot of camaraderie. Everybody's having a good time, and everybody wants to cook the winning steak. So let's cut into this one and see what it looks like. So I'm just gonna cut it in half first so I can see what the doneness looks like. So check the doneness out on this steak. I mean, that's perfect. We've got that perfect medium. It's pink through and through. It's got a warm center. That's what you want for medium. And now we gotta cut it up so we can try it. And that's what the judges would do. They would, they would get it in the to-go box. They would cut them some bites at a cut table, bring it over to them, let them judge the appearance of it, see the grill marks, see the doneness. 
and then they're going to come in there and I want them to get a bite of that spinalis. See that's perfectly medium all the way through and that's what I want to try. <laughs> Textbook ribeye. It's got a saltiness, you can get the pepper and the garlic, the butter over the top. It gives it a real richness. It's perfect flavors, but you taste the beef. And that's what I want the judges to taste in this contest. I'm not trying to get outside the box. I want to give them just a great tasting ribeye and hey, let them decide if they like it or not because we have no control of that. Hey, you got to check out these SCA contests. Go to their website, find one close to you. You can go get certified to judge, but you got to get out there and cook. They're a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for checking us out today here at How to Barbecue Right. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channel. It'll let you know we're putting out new stuff. You can also send those comments and questions to our Facebook and Twitter pages. We love those and we try to answer them all. We'll see you guys next time. I'll turn that in, wouldn't you?